We spend our lives around machines that use linkages. They are so widespread and generally trouble-free that they usually go unnoticed by a lot of people. However, many devices would not function without them. Some linkages are pretty easy to understand. For instance, if we look at how a piston is attached to a crankshaft inside of an engine. Suppose the connecting rod attaches two inches away from the center of the crankshaft. When the crankshaft makes one full rotation, the piston will travel four inches. Let's look at something a bit more complicated, like the windshield wiper mechanism on a car. It's not nearly as easy to understand. How would you go about designing a mechanism such as this? I suppose you could cut out pieces of construction paper and pin them together with thumbtacks. Fortunately though, there is a better way. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use a free piece of software, aptly named Linkage, to design, you guessed it, a linkage. Designing linkages can be fun and fascinating, as making minor changes to the geometry can dramatically impact how the system operates. I got interested in designing linkages because I needed to solve a problem. I needed to build a hinge for an inset floor hatch that weighed 90 pounds. This hatch covered a shaft that is used to access a lower level in a facility. A traditional hinge wouldn't work. It would create a tripping hazard and make it more difficult to move heavy equipment around. The hinge would need to be concealed. However, traditional concealed hinges also wouldn't work because they need to be located at the corner of the door or hatch they are attached to. In this case, that area surrounding the edge of the hatch is solid concrete. One of my work colleagues suggested that I needed a hinge kind of like the ones used on the hood of an old pickup. This definitely helped move the project in the right direction. An internet search for concealed hinge mechanisms led to a YouTube channel specializing in animated mechanisms. One of the animations was almost exactly what I needed. However, as you can see, the motion is quite complex. It would be impossible to guess where the pivot points would be located to produce the desired motion. This is where the linkage software excels, and it makes coming up with the required geometry quite easy. The finished mechanism is a six bar linkage, just like the mechanism in the video. It lifts the cover straight up at first, so the cover lip clears the floor, and then moves the entire hatch far enough out of the way to be able to erect handrails around the open hole. As an added benefit, it holds the hatch partway open, so it's easy to close without bending back down. So now that we have a bit of background, let's design the geometry for a mechanism using linkage. Play around and experiment. This is an easy program to learn, and once you get the hang of it, quite a bit of fun. When you first open linkage, it's just a blank canvas with a single anchor point, set at the project origin 00. This is important to keep in mind. When designing this hinge, we'll assign this origin to the end of the shaft. This way, when it comes time to install the hinge, it'll be easy to ensure that the components are placed in the correct location so the mechanism will function. It also makes creating the animated 3D model easier because you can arrange the mechanism pivots to the same origin point. We'll start by creating a mock-up of the edge of the shaft where the cover rests. This way, when we start manipulating the hinge geometry, we can ensure that it is lifting clear of the step where it rests, and that it will be out of the way to allow installation of the handrails. As mentioned before, we'll designate the top corner of the shaft 00 and then work from there. To navigate the work area, use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Scrolling up and down will zoom in and out, and clicking and holding the scroll wheel will allow you to pan around the work area. To outline the shaft, we'll start by drawing a rectangle 3 inches wide by 12 inches tall, with the top left corner located at the origin point. We'll place three more anchors. Placing them accurately doesn't matter because we can define their location afterwards. Right click and then select anchor. After the anchor is placed, select it with the left mouse button and then define the coordinates. The convention is X comma Y. Pressing enter will move the point to the specified location. The second anchor needs to be placed at three, zero. This will place it three inches to the right and at the same level as the first one. Let's locate the remaining two anchors. Right click, select anchor, select this new anchor, and then enter its coordinates. In this case, 3, negative 12. Let's create the last anchor for this component. Right click, create the anchor, and then place it at 0, negative 12. Now that the anchors are all placed for this component, let's select them and link them together. There are two ways to select multiple points. Either you can hold control and then click on each point individually, or you can perform a rectangular select by left clicking and holding at the one corner and then dragging over the area before releasing the left mouse button. You can also control click to deselect components that you don't want included in your selection. Let's select all of these anchors and then click link. In linking anchors and connectors, it's essential that all the entities that you want to act as one object are selected at the same time before clicking link. If you don't do this, the software will create individual linkages between these points instead of one solid component. This is a single component. All of the links are of one color, and the space between them is shaded. 
Before moving on, we should lock this new object in place so we can't inadvertently move it. Select each of the components again, right click, and then select lock in the pop-up menu. If you find that your workspace is getting too cluttered with labels, these can be turned off by selecting details in the toolbar and then disabling labels. The step for the hatch cover is sunken one quarter inch into the floor and it's one and a half inches wide. Let's draw that next. As before, we will create four more anchors, define their location and link them together. We'll also lock these anchor points and links as before. Now that we have the shaft outlined, let's draw the cover. The process is the same as before, except we will use connectors instead of outlining the shape with anchors. The difference is that we want this object to move when we animate the whole assembly. The cover is 39 inches long and 1 quarter inch thick. It sits on the step with a 3 16 gap between it and the edge of the step. It overlaps the step by 1 and 5 16 or 1.313 in decimal. We will create connectors at 1.3130 and 1.313.25. For the other edge of the cover, we will subtract 39 inches from 1.313, giving us a result of negative 37.687. We will place two more connectors at negative 37.687.0 and negative 37.687.25. These four connectors represent the hatch cover plate, but before we link them, Let's add two more connectors to the bottom. Their locations are not important right now, but they will need to be created as these will be the points where the linkage we are designing will attach. Now that we have all six connectors placed, let's link them as we did previously. We'll select all six and then click link. Now we have a completed hatch cover. The last piece of preparation is to place the components that will make up the hinge itself. Let's start by placing two anchors alongside the ladder shaft we began with. These will represent the fixed body of the hinge. For now, their locations don't really matter as we will be manipulating them to get the desired motion. Next, we will place three more connectors to the left of the anchors. These will serve as the pivot points for our hinge's linkage arms. Now we are ready to begin linking the various connectors and anchors together. The way they are connected is critical for this project to work. I will label the connectors to make the step easier to follow. The ones on the cover are A and B, the fixed anchors C and D, and the remaining ones E, F, and G. Let's begin by linking the various components together. A links to E, G links to D, E, F, and C link together, and finally B, F, and G link together. Now with all the links connected, we can begin playing around with the geometry. We'll take advantage of a couple of additional features to help. First, linkage can trace the path of any connector so you can see how it moves. So let's enable that feature on the bottom right connector on the cover. Right click the connector and enable Draw Motion Path. Next we'll do the same on the opposite side of the cover as well. Now lastly, we need to drive the linkage. Right click on the lower anchor and in the context menu, let's set it as a rotation input anchor. I find that 4 RPM is a comfortable speed and we'll set the range of motion from 0 degrees to 85 degrees. We can fine tune it later. You may have noticed that there's an option for Always Manual Motion. This allows you to use a manual slider to drive the mechanism instead of having it move automatically. Try both and find out which one you like better. Now that we have all of this set up, let's run the simulation and see what kind of motion we get. Click on the Run button in the corner and the simulation will begin. So as you can see, our first attempt isn't at all what we want. The hatch doesn't lift off of the step, but instead gets driven through it. Also, the simulation broke at the end of the travel. The simulation breaking isn't a huge concern. We can reduce the range of motion to prevent that from happening. As for the cover's motion, this is where the trial and error part of linkage comes in. It's just a matter of changing some of the pivot point locations and trying again. It took me a lot of trial and error to get the finished result I ended up using, but making a change and trying again is easy. Eventually, you start to get closer to the result you are looking for, and you can start to understand how moving individual pivots impacts the mechanism's operation. 
When you do finally solve the puzzle, it feels really rewarding, and being able to design a complex linkage opens the door to all kinds of interesting things you can build. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on using linkage. Have fun building neat stuff.